This is Chris, with a K, better known as Kel's dad, and he is a dreamer. He's a streamer. Damn. Don't you, don't you just love some good throat, my god. A father. and a very talented musical artist. I became acquainted with Chris through a mutual friend by the name of Micah, another very talented artist. The energy that Chris exudes is one of the things that drew me towards him as a creator. That, and having some pretty bass takes. Far Cry 3 is the best Far Cry, bro. Oh God. Oh! Oh! When I discovered that Chris did music, I mean, I had to check it out. His single, Jimmy Kudo, was a vibe, and his EP, I went to San Francisco and all I got was his lousy mixtape, was all the evidence I needed to hear to see how talented he really was. But speaking of Jimmy Kudo, there was something Chris said at the end of that that stood out most to me. Oh, this is the part where I start to talk my shit. Yeah, okay, so please don't text me after this. That's the, the album. Yeah, the album's gonna be coming soon. Uh, I think y'all gonna be fucking with it, man. I don't know. I don't know what I could. What else I can really say to y'all, bro? It's really Jimmy Kudo shit, Conan Edagawa shit. You know what I'm saying? Chris with a K. What do you really? What else do I have to explain to you? What else? What else do I have to really say at this point, bro? Please don't text me after this. A then upcoming album by Chris. I'm not the biggest social media person, and due to conflicting schedules, I rarely am able to make Chris's streams. So any significant updates that he may have revealed about the upcoming album, I probably missed it. So I kind of forgot about it. It took Micah to call me personally to tell me that it's out and I should go listen to it. Now her and Chris are really close friends, but also I had seen images of them together in a booth, so they got me really excited because Chris is very talented and can rap. And Micah, <whistles> Micah can sing. How did we come to this? Maybe I've been living in a daydream. Talking in my sleep. If I've been awake, pardon my mistake. But time is running low and talk is growing cheap. We this album, released on May 5th, this date is an homage to Micah, who goes by the Mick 5 on the internet, because 5 is her favorite number. So the album releasing on 5 5 was a really cute nod. Before I get to talking about the album itself, I have a confession to make. I started an early version of this video a little more than half a year ago, probably more at this point. It was initially me sitting outside, reading pages and pages of notes that I had jotted down listening to the album. Weeks and weeks went by, and the more I procrastinated, the more the video felt off. But I was still hyping this video up to Micah because I did feel strongly about the album enough to talk about it, but the presentation felt a little wonky to me. There was so much thought into where I sat, how I sat, the clothes I wore. I even went out of my way to get Chris's signature octagonal frames as a nod to him. But after siphoning through an hour's worth of footage, it all felt so contrived and even writing this, I'm realizing that I do a lot better behind the camera. I want to admire this album art for a second because it deserves it. Made by the incredible Don Lowe, they really outdid themselves. I don't know if they'll ever see this video, but I really enjoy this artwork, so before I get to the music, I want to talk about it. The setting resembles that of a therapist's office, with Chris sitting on the couch. And you can tell it's Chris because, well, it's his album, but also you can see his trademark locks and painted nails. And he's covering his face. On his wrist is a watch, but not just any watch, it's very reminiscent of Ben 10's Omnitrix, and I've been racking my brain for the significance of it, but I think it's cool either way. In the background there's a sign that says went to USF and all I got was this lousy PhD. I think a clear reference to his past work I mentioned earlier. And there's a woman holding a folder with the name of the album. And we also don't see the woman's face, but she has this incredible head of hair, like just this mane. And this woman is supposed to be Micah, aka the Mc5, who is playing the role of Chris's therapist. The album contains 15 tracks, including two interludes, and initially I talked about each of these songs individually, but I want to try something new. Firstly, this is an extremely personal album to Chris. Just about, if not every song, pulls back to curtain revealing more and more of his life. 
This album dives deep into his mental state, his insecurities as a father, his insecurities as a partner, and even the loss of a parent. It's evident early on that Chris struggles with self-love, trust, and the struggle to really open himself up, which I find ironic after hearing the entire album. From I-75 to Catacombs is us getting through a lot of the hard stuff. My kid's actually playing the role of the therapist like I mentioned earlier, providing ad-libs and being a big part of the interludes, guiding Chris through his limitations and the feeling of constantly feeling like he needs to get away. Hello, Mr. Dad. It's good to see you. Hey, Micah. Uh, sorry for running in here so late. Oh, it's okay. We'll just jump right back in. Is that fine? Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. So, in our last session, we were discussing limitations. Can you expand on that? I could be reading too deep into it, but by the time we get to the song Two Form, Chris sounds more confident in this one, like a complete tonal shift from the previous song. So it's like, through these sessions, and through the music, the more he opens up, the more comfortable he gets, and that results in probably my favorite track on the album, First Steps, where Micah leads Chris in a dance to calm him down, help him relax, and it's genuinely a fantastic song. They laugh, Chris cracks some jokes, and Micah has a whole verse in this song. And when things are more calm, Micah decides to ask Chris about his mother, who unfortunately is no longer with us. Four. <sighs> okay. So now that you're relaxed, we're gonna do an exercise. You're gonna stand up, mm -hmm. put your hand on my waist, um, <laughs> and you're gonna hold my hand. Uh huh, yeah. <laughs> and we're just gonna dance. Thank you for trying this exercise and taking your first steps in the right direction. Thank you for even doing that. I wouldn't have ever expected something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was for you to let go and accept what is and have a safe space to maybe open up about your mother. Opening up about a past loved one, especially a parent, is never an easy thing to ask. The tone shift from first steps to stairway to heaven hits you like a semi-truck. Chris suffered in silence, but vowed to be a better father because of it. Drove a wedge in between us for years, didn't see your face Driven towards affection, was driving myself insane So I made myself a promise, I swore I would never break That my son won't know the same pain till I hit the stairway And then comes alone Probably the first time I felt tears well up in my eyes But I'm in too deep at this point I related to this song on a level that was almost uncomfortable Waking up alone, going to the gym alone being out with people, but still feeling alone. Trying to find a happy place, but not knowing where to go. Fitting to place this song right after Stairway to Heaven. But Micah is still guiding him through this, reminding him that he's not alone. Always away, I never stay. Leave me alone in disarray. If only you knew shit I've been through. Left me overexerted, overwhelmed, and overused. Never give up, never give in, never Betray yourself, the strength come from within Don't envy the dark, empty your soul If you lose your light, then you never glow it goes. And of course this album wouldn't be complete without a little trauma The first lines I hear after this song is Shit, nigga, you always gonna be alone, nigga To steal a line from Voice to 5-9 Black people don't know a goddamn thing about therapy Kudos to Chris for making a track like Wrong Turn a track that's a lot more aggressive than any other track, in my opinion. Painting the other side of the struggle with themes of violence until he hears his son's voice, and then suddenly everything's become clear. Ain't no other way, I'm a sharpen up this blade and... I love you too. What the hell am I doing? How have I been such a fool? How could I ever teach you if I'm fighting for my freedom? How could I ever reach you if I'm gone like every season? Chris is still growing, and as he continues to grow a lot more of that energy he stores, he's going to return to the earth in the form of art like this album. As we reach the end of Micah and Chris's sessions, Micah says this. Thank you. Uh, same time next week? I'll text you. Which I thought was funny because, please don't text me after this, yeah, yeah, you get it. This album touched me in ways that I thought I had already felt before. Music isn't just a medium, it's a feeling. This album had me vibing, dancing, and crying all in the span of an hour. I mentioned him earlier briefly, but Royce to 5 9 has an album called The Book of Ryan, an album that was described by him as the untold tale of scandal, and goes on to say, All my bars of madness, 
that are inspired by my childhood scars and sadness, and that album moved me in a similar way to this album. Royce's album also touched on his insecurities as a father, while also not trying to adopt his father's old habits, his dad's history with drug, alcohol, and domestic abuse, his battle with alcohol addiction, and the struggle alone of being a black man. I also can relate this to another album that resonated with me and Kendrick Lamar's Mr. Morale and The Big Steppers, an album that was so personal it made many listeners uncomfortable and or feel disconnected from KDOT, from his talks about how he might be a hypocritical racist to failing to cope with some of his more detrimental vices thanks to his daddy issues and generational trauma handed down from his mother. But by the end of the album, realizes that he can't save the world, and it's gotta be just him. And Chris also can't save the world, because he's too busy building his. This isn't my quote, but I love how much reverence it has here. At any given moment, the most powerful dream in that moment wins that moment. And Chris is a very powerful dreamer. The art that you put into the world and having the strength to be just vulnerable and make something like this, especially as a black man, deserves to be praised. I'm sorry this video took as long as it did, and it may feel like a watered down version of my original vision, but Chris, you made art that spoke to me, to everyone that touched this album, to Micah, all the mixers and engineers, everyone within a five mile radius of the studio when this album was being created. Thank you. Chris, you're an exceptional streamer, a powerful dreamer, a model father, and it's been an honor to make this video. And to anyone out there who may see this, um, because I won't make it public until I actually get permission from the creator of all this music, I want you to remember one thing. You're not alone. Why am I doing this at 2 o'clock in the morning?